This is Justin and Jordan Kennedy with Gateway RV Transport, and today we are going to be talking about some tips, specifically 10 tips, for life on the road. Does that sound right, Jordan? Sounds right. Okay. You want me to go first? So, yeah, we each have our own list of 10. We'll let uh, you, the listener, decide. Which are better? Whose are better? <laughs> okay. Well, I think that mine probably aren't, but here we go. Well, actually, I have... Uh, maybe I don't know if it's an advantage or a disadvantage, but you read me your list, and so my list doesn't overlap yours, but you had some ideas on there that probably okay. would have made mine, so yours is okay, well, probably going to be a good list. All right, well, here's the first 10 from me, Justin. First one, I recommend getting into a routine for your hookup. I, When I'm hooking up to a unit, I kind of go through the same process, so... When I'm backing up to a unit, I, I only have to walk around the unit one time. I'll, do, I'll check the lights. I'll put on the plate. I'll do the whole thing in one go. I think if you get into a routine, in a habit, you're less likely to miss something. Um, so that's the first thing, I guess, is to get a routine going. So where you, you back up, you hook up, you and turn on the four-way lights. You grab your plate. You grab your pin. You grab your battery. You kind of do it all in one go, and you can kind of just do one lap around the trailer. What's helpful about having a... A system is if you get interrupted, you it's probably a good idea to start over. That way you're not you're not missing anything. You're yeah. forgetting to play to dealership or not putting on your battery. Or... Yeah, because generally where people forget things is when they get in a rush um, and where they start skipping steps. So I would just you come up with a a habit there. The second thing is for your breakaway battery, they make these slide on batteries. Um, you can buy them at the Ace Hardware in Middlebury. They're really convenient and nice. They slide onto the tongue of the, the uh, trailer. We also sell them at the office. So if you are interested in checking what one of those that what they are all about, just come ask for me and I'll uh, I'll show them to you. I really like it. It's way convenient. You slide it right on. So that's another thing is I would I would get one of those. The third thing is just always carrying blocks with you. There's so many times where I've needed blocks for various reasons, just some wooden blocks. So whether it's adjusting the height on it the trailer to be able to get it on or off or I don't, there's just been several times where I've needed them, which kind of leads into my number four, which is having a well-stocked driver kit of straps, tape and bungee cords. You just never know when something's going to come off. Like one of my last trips I did, the underbelly started falling out, which it happens from time to time. And so I was able to use my straps to kind of strap it back in place, which was nice. So, so like what having you, some so ratchet have, straps in a, in a case. So and, what do you, yeah, I, I have a, like a tote from Lowe's. Um, if I was on the road more, I might invest in a slightly nicer, higher quality one, but essentially a box that I have all my stuff in. And every time that I'm on the road and I think, I wish I had this, I'll, I'll throw it into the box the next, when I can. So like a uh, screwdriver, um, sockets, a bottle jack, like every time that I thought, I wish I had this thing and I'm able to get it, I'll throw it in this box. So I just, especially, you know, in Jordan and I's case, we, when we do take trips, we're switching between trucks. It's not like we have the same truck every time. So I unload. I have my box full of tools, and then I have a box full of bedding and just kind of some living stuff that I'll just load into the truck so it's nice and convenient and easy. If I was in the same truck all the time, if I had my own truck, it'd be a little bit different maybe, but it's still that concept of a toolbox that's ready to go with the stuff you need. And, right? and those items are specific to the box only, so you're not yeah. taking your screwdriver home, yeah. doing home projects. That or... way I... I have my tools for the truck, and then those are not the same as the tools that I have for, you know, my just regular home mm -hmm. stuff. Then um, I definitely recommend every time I fill up, I like to, to write down the odometer and then how many gallons I bought so I can track my miles to the gallon so you can kind of look for trends. So, like, for example, this last trip I did, last week I went to Utah, and you could see the difference in the miles to the gallon for the different legs of the journey. Um, I actually got 18 miles to the gallon coming back, which was the best that I've gotten. Um but anyway, so tracking MPGs, you can kind of look for trends. Then the sixth thing, every time, and I do this not just when I'm uh, taking a trip, but even in my car, every time I am fueling up, I'll use that time to clean out the my vehicle. So I'll throw away any trash, kind of put things back in place, and just it's kind of a nice, I, I keep a fairly clean vehicle, not especially compared to some people, not really, but um, because I just declutter routinely when I'm fueling up. The seventh, I am a big fan of after I've delivered, 
I, I'll look up the, the, my route back and searching along the route for some trails. I like, it's a little bit harder when you have a trailer, you kind of just have to do what you can, but so that you don't, um, yeah, I mean, we're both trying to stay and, and get in shape and, and in order to do that on the road, you don't want to lose your rhythm. And so I like to look for hiking trails along my route back and stopping. And, and so like the, about a month ago, maybe two months ago, I went to Phoenix. I stopped at the state park in Phoenix on my way back and did a 30 minute hike. It was really cool. It was a fun hike and I still got to do some exercise. So, I mean, kind of along with that, you got to try and do some exercise on the road catered to your, where you're at in life and what you're trying to do. And we've said it many times, but if you're not finding cool places to stop by on your way back, you're missing a huge opportunity for the yeah. for this job because it's really, really cool to, to be able to go hiking through like Joshua Tree. Yeah. Uh, I, last time I went to Arizona, did that and just I would never do that otherwise. Yeah. It was really cool to kind of sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Or, so like I, I'm thinking through some of the trips that I've done. Like we both done the Newfoundland one, and there you have to wait for the boat when you're on the island, which kind of forced me. So I went and did this waterfall hike, which was really cool. On my way back from Utah, another time I stopped along this right on the side of the road. Really, so there's a waterfall um, outside of like in Provo Canyon. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. When I dropped in California last, I was like an hour from the beach, so I I went and stayed at the beach. Um, you know, just finding cool spots. So it's it, it kind of multifaceted. You hit some cool spots, and then I also like trying to do some form of exercise on the road. So that's one. Looking for hikes on the way back. And then number eight would be keeping an organized binder with all of your paperwork that you keep current. And it's just everything's in a little plastic sleeve in the binder. So for me, I have my driver binder that has our policies and procedures and those sorts of things. And then I have the – for us, you know, in company trucks, I have a, fi a little uh, plastic sleeve for each truck. And it's labeled, so it's kind of nice. If you get stopped, it's going to look more professional. If you have to stop and go into the waste scale or the, the scale house, you just bring in the whole binder and it has everything in there. It makes it a lot easier than um, – and then at the beginning of every trip when I'm, I'm making sure that I have all my paperwork updated for that truck that I'm going to be in. Then number nine would be – same thing as like a routine for when I hook up. I have a routine for when I deliver because it's easy to forget your plate. In fact, the last time uh, when I was up in Detroit, I met somebody at the border and – to deliver the trailer and I was behind, I was running late and I accidentally left my plate on because I didn't follow the regular steps because I was in a big rush and I, I felt bad because I was behind and I had to meet this guy. But just having the same, the same thing, you get out of the truck, you, whatever the, the order is, you keep the sequence of events the same so that you don't forget. And that is mm -hmm. helpful for me because it's easy to forget your plate or your battery. And then the last thing is after you deliver, take, the ball out of the truck, the your hitch, and put it in the cab of your truck so it doesn't get stolen. I've never had it stolen, but I've I heard have. from you and yep. you have. Mm -hmm. And um, I now I do that every time because I I know it's it's only a matter of time before somebody would come through. And it's an easy swipe, or you, I mean you can get locks too. But for me, it's easier just you pull the whole thing off, you throw it in the cab of your truck. So there's ten of my ideas, um, and there's a lot of other ones. And some of those might seem common sense, some of them are not. I don't know, but uh, things that I I'm glad that I know or do. And so I've got 10 tips, but like I mentioned before, I had the privilege, the opportunity to see your list first. So some of the ones on there are, for me, like a staple for traveling. If you're not doing some of those, it's uh, it just makes your life so much more simple. So the tips that I have uh, listed that I'll go through, um, some of them will have a little bit of crossover on what you did already say there. I think different enough to be mentioned separately. But uh, anyway, the first one is auxiliary tank in your truck. If you don't have an auxiliary tank in your truck, man, it's unless you're looking for a reason to stop every two and you know three or four hours, uh, which I don't know, maybe you enjoy that. But I, I've taken a couple trips with company trucks that didn't, and then a bunch of trips, of course, that with trucks that did have an auxiliary tank. Huge game changer. So if you're a new driver or looking at getting into to doing this, um, or maybe you just have never invested in an auxiliary tank, I would seriously consider it. I think it's a huge advantage having an auxiliary tank, not only for the convenience, but primarily for getting cheap fuel. If, if you're going through places, uh, and this will I'll talk about in a second, but uh, uh, getting the cheapest fuel possible, if you can buy 80 gallons of fuel that's 18 cents cheaper or, you know, or more, 
a huge money saver too. I, I don't think it takes very long to recoup the cost of buying an auxiliary tank. And it, I would say with that too, like, because people will say they don't like going to California because of the price of fuel. I've never had to fill up in California because you just, you fill up before you get there. And I, I bummed around California doing some visiting dealers and things. And I never had to fill up the entire time because I just waited until I got back and the auxiliary tank only made that easier. You probably, honestly, most of the time when you deliver in California, you probably could get in and out even without an auxiliary tank, without having to fill up in California, or if you did, you only have to put a little bit in. Same thing with Canada. If you're mm-hmm. worried about the price of fuel in Canada, yep. tank up before you get in, and then you can tank up after, and you probably won't even have to buy fuel in Canada. Yeah. In fact, I went to, um, yeah, going to Newfoundland, which is a pretty long trip, even just in the Canadian side. Uh, I think I had to fill up in Canada once, uh, and I was going with another driver. We, 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 he, we were in two separate trailers, he didn't have a, an auxiliary tank and stopping all the time, paying, paying a lot more. Tip number two that I have is, is related in a way. It's the prep. Prep your route. Take time to look at the route, look where you're going to go. Uh, if you like to live on the edge and just hop in a truck and hit the road, I mean, you could do that if it gives you, you know, if you get excited about not knowing what to expect. I hate that. I'd much rather know what to expect. So looking up the route, seeing where... I'm going to find construction along the route, seeing if there's, um, uh, like on, on 80, there's always some construction. Or if you're going through um, cities that often have, will, will usually have construction if there's like a circular road around the city. Uh, maybe you can't avoid the construction, but you can plan it to where you're not going through that area in rush hour. And then planning where I'm going to stop for the night. Uh, that is one of one of the biggest stresses I have is like when I only have half an hour left and I don't know where I'm going to stop. I hate that. I'd much rather have pre-planned where I'm going to go. And then the same thing with fuel. Uh, I know it's going to be a good trip if I've taken 20 or 30 minutes before I've left and I've plotted out where I'm going to stop for fuel, where I'm going to stop for the night for my whole route. Uh, there's a whole bunch of apps on on your phone that you can get that have the cheapest you plug in where you're the, the origin and the destination of your trip and it gives you the cheapest places to fuel along the whole route and so using one of those to then plot where you're filling up saves you money saves you a headache of of um, where you're going to stop everything's just planned that's a big one for me is just that prep side uh, number three is i like it i try to as long as time permitting uh, as long as time's permitting to deliver in the morning I try to schedule my day um, start, even before I've left, uh, whether it's going to be a 400-mile trip or a 2,300-mile trip, to where it's likely that I will be delivering first thing in the morning. You never know what's going to go wrong. Trying to deliver in the afternoon, I just I don't have as good of luck with that for some reason. And then not being in a hurry. You don't want to be feel you don't want to feel rushed when you're at a dealer delivering because they are often not in a rush. And if you're scheduling yourself so tight that if your delivery is going to take two hours that you're going to be screwed up i just don't think that's a really realistic way to try to plan I, so I'd, I'd my suggestion is or what i found that works is planning to deliver first thing in the morning and expecting it to take the first half of the day it's never for me i've been lucky it's never taken four hours to deliver but i'm mentally prepared to be willing to sit there for four hours and that that just makes it easier for me much less stressful my number four is starting the day early, ending the day early. So instead of, it's really easy, especially at the very beginning of the trip, to say I'm going to leave at 7 a.m. and 7 turns into 8 and then I need to find something and then that turns into 9 and then by the time I'm ready to go it's actually 1 p.m. and I'm trying to maximize my time so I'm already leaving late, driving late. When it's on the road especially, I find it way more, um, I don't know if productive's right, but leaving early if i wake up at you know four or five hit the road early i'm i have to stop before the 11 hours or by the 11 hours there's less trucks at at rest areas or truck stops it's easier to find a place i feel less tired less stressed i much prefer to leave start early end early Uh, my number five is related to one of the things that you had mentioned is related to compliance basically is keep on top of your logs Trying to log retroactively, it's just, it's just not worth it. Every time I'm stopping and starting, which is what you're supposed to do anyway, but I know a lot of drivers don't. I know it's easy to, at the end of the day, then do your whole log. 
or at the end of your trip. I know we have some drivers that in the past have waited till they got back from a trip and then they did all their logs. Uh, I don't know. I would not advocate for that. It's so much easier to be on top of the logs. Then it's like a it's like a 15 second update. It takes five minutes at the beginning of the day to get started. Then 15 seconds when you stop the truck. 15 seconds when you start the truck. And then I don't got to be stressed about it when I hit a way station or if I see uh, you know a highway patrolman sitting on the side of the road. I don't have to wonder, you know, if uh, my my heart rate stays at a reasonable level. And the same thing with compliance, which you had mentioned before, just making sure all of your compliance documents are in a row. That way, when the the light says stop at skate, stop to way or whatever, I'm not panicking because I've had that, and I don't know if you've, but I don't like stressful driving. And so, what I can do to eliminate stress is be 100% confident that when if I get pulled into the way station, that there's not going to be any problem. That that by itself makes my trip totally different. Uh, number six, uh, related to security, and again, this is one that you talked about, but making sure that the unit's locked up, and uh, at night, I have a habit of, I've tried to make it a habit of anything that can be removed, removing it, and just putting it inside, whether it's my magnetic placards, even my license plate, if somebody can mess with it, I just don't want to give them an opportunity to, so I remove it. And we'll just put it back on. And it gives me another thing to do kind of when I'm getting ready for the morning to wake up with is go put the placards back on, put my plate back on. If you have a, uh, a bed cover, I think that's a great advantage, having a lockable bed cover. That way you can just have everything in your bed and not be stressed about it. Uh, number seven is related to food. So I find it so convenient to have a cooler uh, that's reachable inside the truck that has drinks that has snacks i might not be eating every single meal from a pre-prepped um, like meal plan but at least i have some snacks that can get me through so i'll make sure i have plenty of stuff in a cooler plenty of water plenty of uh, other drinks you know if you're in your pop or whatever just so that it's right there easy to get to i don't have to um, make a special stop for snacks. Uh, number eight is, um, this is maybe just a personal preference, but I have an app, I know you have this app too, called Libby, which is a free audio, audio book app. That makes a big difference in my trips as well, what I'm listening to, staying focused. It helps me to, I know this can be go either way. Some, this is a personal preference thing. Some people have a hard time focusing on driving if they're listening to a book. Uh, I don't find that. I have an easier time staying focused, staying awake, staying alert if my mind is also active, which an audiobook allows me to do. And Libby is free. So what you have to do is just get a, your local library, your, your local county library, get a card, a library card, and you link it up with that, and then your local library has a list of titles that are all free. Um, it may not have every single book that you've ever heard of or that you'd want to listen to, but it has enough to where you're going to have plenty to listen to. So that's a big one for me. I know everybody's got their own listening habits, but um, that one I've definitely taken advantage of. Number nine, I would say invest in a, a quality phone holder. So you have like a little clip on like into your ventilation, your, your little vent uh, phone holder when you hit a bump and your phone falls out, or if you have one of the kind that sticks into the cup holder and you're going through construction and it, you, it just keeps tipping over or whatever, invest in a good phone holder that, that will stay in the position to where you can keep your map open. Uh, you don't have to go digging for your phone if you, get a, uh, if you don't have a hands-free phone call on your truck, uh, or if you um, want to fast forward to the boring part of your audiobook, I guess. But just an easy, accessible, uh, having easy access to your phone. Now, of course, I do need to make sure I have the caveat on there. You're not supposed to, you don't be using your phone while you're driving, but um, there's a lot of tools that your phone still is able to provide while you're driving. Your tools, you can keep an eye on your logs, etc. But having a good phone holder is one thing I would, is a tip I would recommend. Uh, and finally, this one's just really small, uh, but a locking hitch pin for your for your ball lock. Uh, I think most people that I see just have a regular like C clip that goes into the, the ball lock, which is fine. Uh, I've had those stolen uh, as well. Just somebody trying to be a nuisance will we'll take that out and lift up your, uh, you know, the the latch. 
which is, it, it's silly, but people do it. So just give me some peace of mind by getting a, a locking hitch pin. Uh, I prefer combination kind because then I don't have to worry about losing a key at the dealership. But uh, anyway, having a, a locking hitch pin is my number 10 tip for being on the road. Cool. Well, hopefully those are helpful. Um, we'd like to hear from you things that would be helpful for other drivers to know, things that you've learned, things that have, you find beneficial. Um, we want to share those with each other. I mean, one of the things, you know, if you have a lot of time to think and, and uh, while you're driving, what things could you share that might uh, benefit another person? So if you have anything, reach out to me or Jordan. We'd love to you know, spread good information to each other. So thanks for listening. And Jordan, you have anything else? Yeah, thanks for listening.